Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Phoenix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 105, or 105 rather, of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. I'm Lola Phoenix. If you would like to ask me a question on the podcast or the column, you can send it to ask at nonmonogamyhelp.com. There's also a contact page where you can record a question if you want to using SpeakPipe, and they'll either be in the podcast or the column anonymously. If you use SpeakPipe, speak pipe i'm probably going to put it in the podcast gotta be real but you're more than welcome to let me know which one you want you can read the columns listen to the podcast and find pretty much everything at nonmonogamyhelp.com and the column is also on twitter and instagram the column and the podcast is also on twitter and instagram at nonmonogamyhelp time for me to actually get to this this week's discussion question if this is the first time you're hearing this first of all i'm sorry second of all every week before i read the letter i put forth the discussion question you can use with your friends partners and anyone else to get to know them a little bit more and I also answer it myself briefly to give you a little bit of context this week's discussion question is what were your earliest misconceptions about therapy I really like this question I don't think I've asked it yet but my previous misconceptions of therapy firstly was this weird kind of thing that doesn't didn't really make much sense so I thought that Either I was not crazy enough, as in I would walk into therapy and they would be like, what the hell is your problem? You don't have any problems. Go away. We're here to help people with real problems. Or I was so crazy they would lock me up immediately. And I don't know how I thought both of these things could be concurrently possible, but that was my reason for not going to therapy for a long time. I'm like, either I'm not crazy enough or I'm so crazy that I'm going to be locked away. And... It actually took like a friend of mine at university who was going to a therapist and I was like, okay, maybe this isn't so bad. And it took, a, it took a while because to be honest, my first kind of therapeutic similar experience was accidentally talking to a guidance counselor in high school when George Bush won the election and I was in a super conservative school and it was really upsetting. And I just had a lot of like self-hatred after that, like for telling someone else that I was upset, which is, whoo. That's a lot of stuff to unpack, and I unpacked it all, and here we are. I I mean, I guess I'm still unpacking stuff anyway, but those earliest misconceptions were super unhelpful for me, and I'm very glad I worked through them. So yeah, the discussion question is, what were your earliest misconceptions about therapy? Let's get to this week's letter. I've been with my boyfriend for a little over a year now. I love him very dearly and I could truly not imagine my life without him. However, I've always been a non-monogamous person. I've had open relationships before and they have always been my preference. This has always been something that bothered me and I finally brought it up to him and how I feel about it. He's made it very clear that it's not something he's interested in. I have not tried to push it because I understand it's not for everyone. Now I am dealing with a lot of negative emotions. I feel like I'm giving up a part of who I am to be with him and I know that was my choice to do so. I just don't know how to deal with all my negative emotions. My boyfriend has said that the idea of seeing me with someone else makes him upset, and if he knew I was sleeping with other people, he would feel jealous or insecure. Otherwise, our relationship is fine. He's very kind and sweet, and I love him more than anything. The last time we spoke about this, he felt like it would be best to break up even though we love each other so deeply. I'm just not sure what to do. I've considered going to therapy to see if that would help me cope with how I'm feeling, but I wasn't sure if there would be any other options or things we could try. Before we get to this week's answer, I'm going to quickly plug this episode's sponsor, BetterHelp. We're talking about therapy right now. But for some people, it's quite hard to find a therapist that understands polyamory or knows anything about polyamory. To be honest, it's still kind of a little bit new, but there are therapists out there and looking locally for them may not be within your budget or just even possible for you. You can go on BetterHelp. BetterHelp allows you to find therapists online that you can send messages to at any time of the day. And they do also offer some financial aid, which you can check out. You can get 10% off your first month by using the promo code nonmonogamyhelp, or you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash nonmonogamyhelp. Let's get to my answer. A lot of people 
people kind of assume that like the most important thing about whether or not you can do polyamory is whether or not you can handle the idea of your partner sleeping with someone else. And I actually think that that's kind of a false way to look at it. The measure of what I think means that someone can do polyamory or non-monogamy or whatever, even if they are monogamous to a polyamorous person, is whether or not they have any personal interest in it. Like that's a big thing. That is kind of the anchor that I talk about in my books or in my book, rather. What the hell am I talking about? There's one book, not many books yet. I don't know what's going to happen. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is that I think what makes a good anchor, what makes a good thing to kind of keep someone within the situation in a kind of stable way is having a personal interest in it. There are people who are monogamous to polyamorous people. That is a thing that happens. I feel like there is a personal interest in some way in the situation. Maybe they are loners. They like to have their own independent time. And in the same exact way, and I make this comparison all the time, that, you know, there are sometimes monogamous relationships where you don't see your partner a lot of the times. Either they are in the military, they have uh, time-intensive careers. Not every monogamous person can do that. And so there has to be something there for that person to say, okay, it's worth the sacrifice of not having this person around to stay in this relationship. And I feel like he doesn't have that. Luckily, he has kind of told you and thought about it and said, honestly, this is not for me. We could sit here and psychoanalyze these reasons. We could be like, yeah, but you could work through your insecurity and blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure there are probably like lots of polyamory resources that kind of encourage people to do that. But I feel like actually this is a benefit. This is a good thing, to be fair, because what I see some people do and what happens to some people is that they don't want to lose their partner. They try non-monogamy even though it's totally not for them, even though they have no personal interest in it, to save the relationship that they have with their partner. But fundamentally, they can't save it, just like you can't, you know, if you're expecting a in-person relationship to be identical to a long-distance relationship and you go into a long-distance situation with that expectation, you're going to be disappointed. I think that a lot of people just cave into the pressure and decide to like, yeah, let's try it because I don't want to lose you. But actually, your partner is like quite top quality in this way. Like he's told you he's not into it and he's even suggested breaking up. And I know that seems more painful, but actually the other kind of thing of let me just give up what I think that I want to try and save this relationship is a lot more painful for a lot of people in the long run. If you maybe had never had a non-monogamous relationship before, if you had been together for longer and you were curious, then maybe I would probably be a little bit hesitant to say, okay, just kind of separate because you're incompatible. But you have been in non-monogamous relationships before. You know that it's something that's important to you. And for some reason, you've decided to sacrifice that for this relationship. And I'm a little bit concerned here because it kind of seems like you want therapy to be about like emotional suppression. Therapy will probably give you actually the strength to leave if you need to, which I don't think is a bad thing. I definitely think that you should go to therapy. I think everyone should go to therapy. I think therapy is great. I think, you know, well, I mean, I won't say that all therapists are great, but I do think therapy as a thing is good. And I think that the thing that therapy might help you with is actually this side of you that wants to sacrifice what you want to keep someone around because you haven't been together for a long period of time. And I'm not saying your feelings aren't genuine, and I'm not saying that you don't, you know, have a good connection. But there's part of you that is afraid to lose that to the extent that you're willing to kind of... This almost seems like conversion therapy is what you want in a way, which I think that is something that you need to address. Because actually that kind of inclination, which is a very understandable inclination. I don't think you should feel ashamed about it. A lot of people, we're a relational species. We want to have love in our lives. So we are sometimes very willing to go along with a lot of things that we don't like to keep people around who overall can kind of give us love. However, that inclination is actually not going to be very helpful for you in non-monogamy either. And I think that that is something that you should actually look at with a therapist. I do kind of feel like you and your partner are incompatible. And I think he also feels that too. Maybe he's just kind of hesitant to actually make the break. But I feel like if he has no personal interest in it, and he's quite sure about that. And even if honestly, like in an ideal world, if he could 
you know, go to therapy himself and spend a long time deconstructing everything. Like, we could all say that about anything in our lives, and I just feel like unless he wants to do that, unless he has a desire to do that, there's no point in it because he's not personally motivated or personally interested in it. And you can't make someone personally interested in non-monogamy who isn't. So I do think you're at a base level incompatible here. It really sucks. Sometimes that happens. And honestly, if you both were non-monogamous, that wouldn't be the end of the compatibility testing. You can both be non-monogamous and both have very different ideas of how you want to be non-monogamous. Being non-monogamous in and of itself isn't a fully compatible thing. So there would still be hurdles for you to consider or think about even if he was interested in non-monogamy, but he's not. So I feel like, yeah, I don't think there's anything you can try. In the same way that if you wanted to have children and he didn't, there really isn't anything you can try. Yeah, I guess you could get a dog, but that's not the same thing. So I just think that if this is not something he's interested in, if it's making you unhappy, overall, that unhappiness is just going to grow and grow and grow. And even if you do have a, like, a lovely relationship now, there is a chance that you won't have that in the future. So breaking up amicably can actually be better in a lot of instances than just sitting and allowing the resentment to grow and grow. And then that breaking up your relationship is not really great. And then that inclination within yourself to suppress your emotions, to suppress your needs and wants, to save something, to keep it around, that might be something you actually do want to talk about with a therapist about rather than talking with a therapist about how to cope with the fact that you're unhappy in your relationship. Cause I think most therapists would, I don't know, I'm not a therapist, so I don't know what most therapists might say. So I'm just kind of totally guessing on that. But I, based off of what I've seen, I just think that in general, trying to force yourself to be in a situation where you're not happy isn't really going to work in the long term, even if you're happy now. And that's why it kind of sucks, right? Because you're like, your brain is kind of like, yeah, but we're happy now. So why don't, don't stop this happy feeling, but like, it isn't going to be that way over time. If this is something that you know that you want and you've already had non-monogamous relationships. So you know that you want that. So yeah, I'm sorry. I wish I had better things to kind of give you in terms of trying it. Maybe if he was like unsure but slightly interested, then there would be something there. And maybe if you had never tried non-monogamy, then, you know, we could unpack your reasonings for wanting it. But you have tried non-monogamy. You want non-monogamy. He does not. And he is very sure about that. So you're, there's not really much else to try there. But I do think you should see a therapist, and that's not a bad thing. Hopefully you don't feel judged by that. I think almost everybody should see a therapist. And I think the inclination to want to save a relationship because you enjoy being in it, you know, even though you, there is this kind of looming unhappiness, you're still getting some positive stuff out of it. I think that makes sense. But yeah, overall, it just doesn't seem like you're actually compatible. I hope that helps and good luck. Thank you for listening to episode 105 of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. If you want to be awesome, you can donate to my Patreon. I'm hoping by the time you hear this, the issue with my Patreon should be fixed. I am in the process of adding some more tiers. I've previously charged per creation, but I'm actually trying to get it so it's a flat monthly rate and so that people can actually do an annual membership, but something messed up with how I was setting it up. So if you would like to become a patron, please wait just a little bit of time and hopefully that will be repaired soon. In the meantime, let me just give a shout out to the creators who've actually pledged uh, $5 of their local currency or more per creation. Those people are... Laura Boylan, Chris Albury Jones, Juke, Nikki Jones, James Bartell, Leo Yaki, Tyler Tigno, and Justin Calm. If you can't be a patron, I totally understand. That's absolutely fine. What you can do instead, if you have five minutes, log into iTunes, rate, rate and review the podcast, or rate and review it, uh, or I think you can just rate it on Spotify. Or by the time this comes out, maybe like you'll be able to rate and review it on Spotify too. I don't know. Anywhere you can rate and review the podcast, I would really appreciate it. And let me know on Twitter or Instagram if you've done so, because I don't always get, well, I don't, I don't get any notifications at all. I, I, not, I don't always, I don't get any, I don't get any notifications. So it's always nice to see like a review. It's, it's really appreciated. And, and yeah, I, it's, it's still weird to me because I like 
sit here, I'm recording, and I'm like all by me onesie, and uh, I don't really grapple with the fact that like people actually listen to this. It seems weird to me, but I know that people do. So yeah, I, I really appreciate every, anyone who's ever left a review. Uh, if I haven't already said so, but I think I have said so, but if I haven't already said so, thank you. Thank you for, you know, that's very nice. I really appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. Anyway, that's all for this week. You will get a new column next Friday and another podcast episode in a fortnight. Thank you again for listening. You've been listening to Non-Monogamy Help. Our podcast music has been provided by Chris Albury Jones at albury-jones.com. And the art was made by Dom Jung at d-o-m-d-u-o-n-g.com. Thank you for listening.